Hey guys, welcome back, and today we're going to be doing a different video than things we have been doing. With the NFL season right around the corner, I have a lot of opinions. If you guys have watched my channel, I've got a lot of opinions, and so I'm going to be going through my hot take for all 32 NFL teams entering this season. Now, one thing about this, some takes are going to be hotter than others. Some might not even be hot. They might be a little bit of a warm take, but these are some of my most opinionated thoughts on each team this year. I'd love to hear what you guys think about your favorite team down below. Let me know what do you think is going to end up happening for your favorite team. We've got an NFL awards prediction coming very soon. We've got my sleeper teams. We've got my most overhyped teams also coming. And um, then that's it really for before the final Super Bowl prediction video, which I will also be unveiling my new studio then. Before we get into it, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, and if you sign up for Underdog Fantasy today, you get double your initial deposit if you use my code JWAC. That's code JWAC for double your initial deposit. And uh, let's go ahead and get right into it. Starting off with the Arizona Cardinals, I think they got the worst record in the NFL. This one I don't think super hot. If you look at this team, Kyler Murray is going to be out for a little bit of time at least to start the year. Receiving room, I, I kind of like the receiver room, to be completely honest. Marquise Brown, Rondale Moore, and I am very high on Michael Wilson. If you guys remember, Michael Wilson was one of my guys in last year's draft. I think he's going to be great. I think Zach Ertz probably gets moved deadline as well. That's another take I have for the Cardinals because I think I want to see what's going to end up happening with Trey McBride. You got Paris Johnson. The offensive line still weak. But the defensive side, it's one of the weakest defensive units I have seen in a long time. Zayvon Collins, Kaiser White, Isaiah Simmons as your linebackers, not too bad. I love Buda Baker, but this is a pretty weak defense. It's going to be some growing pains, but it helps when you have a generational quarterback and wide receiver prospect coming in the next draft. We saw that clip from Cardinals camp as well where the ball hit the back of the helmet of the player. I think it's going to be a really rough year for Cardinals fans. And that's my take. I think they have the worst record in the NFL. And the Falcons were a really tough one for me because the Falcons, spoiler alert, are one of my sleepers this year. I think the Falcons are going to be good. Um, I thought I've changed an opinion that I did have for the Falcons. I think that both Kyle Pitts and Drake London are going to have really good years. Now they have a quarterback who's more of a pocket guy who's not going to be moving around and running as much as Mariota. So I think we're going to see less RPOs and more design throws for Desmond Ritter. And I think both Kyle Pitts and Drake London are going to benefit from this. They drafted Kyle Pitts number four overall just a year ago. And I think he's going to have a bounce back year. A lot of people are out on Kyle Pitts. And truthfully, his season wasn't good last year. But the offense around him wasn't really built for him. Now, I think with a new quarterback in place, they can restructure this offense a little bit. We could see some more throws. I think Drake London also showed really good flashes and showed some chemistry with Desmond Ritter towards the back end of the season last year. I think they both have over 750 yards and each have five or more touchdowns. I think I think Drake London's around that 785, five touchdowns, and I think Kyle Pitts has around 900 yards and seven touchdowns on the year. Those are my takes for the Falcons. I think this team is going to be a pretty solid one, and I think that I think they're both going to have great years for the Baltimore Ravens. This one's going to make a lot of people mad. I think they Odell Beckham plays less than 10 games. Notoriously, he is a guy who is consistently injured throughout his career. I think he is going to miss quite a bit of time. I think he plays less than 10 games again. I think he might retire after this year. I think the Ravens missed the playoffs. I know you just got Lamar back. This is another guy who has missed some time each of the last two years. His throwing performance last year was underwhelming, I would say. Um, and then you look at, I know Zay Flowers is getting a ton of buzz at camp. I, I just, I don't love Bateman, another guy who's notoriously injured. I don't love Aguilar. I don't love Odell. I have questions about the receiver room. And then on the defense, I know they got a great safety room. Outside of Marlon Humphrey, I think they have one of the weakest CB rooms in the league. I think that's going to struggle. You're in a loaded division with both Cleveland, Cincinnati, and Pittsburgh. All those teams I think are good. And you got a tough schedule. I think this is a Ravens team. I know they're well coached, but there's just a lot that I have question marks about with this team. I think they're going to miss the playoffs this year. 
For the Buffalo Bills, I think they finished third in the AFC East. I'm really high on the Jets this year. I think they win the division. I think the Dolphins come in second. That Dolphins team was electric last year with Tua missing quite a bit of time. Tua was, he had a really good chance at winning MVP had he had a fully healthy year. And now you get the Jets who beat the Bills last year with Zach Wilson as the quarterback. This is a really good defense in New York. And with Buffalo, this is another team. Their secondary, outside of their safeties, you have question marks. Tredavious White should be fully healthy this year, so I'm hoping that's going to boost the secondary. Kyer Elam, hopefully he can break out. I'm not in love with any of the other cornerbacks in this room. Teron Johnson, solid as a slot guy as well. The offensive line, they didn't really make any huge moves that I think are changing this. I love Osiris Torrance. Think he's going to end up starting probably next year. I don't know if he's a starter this season. I don't love a lot of their uh, outside of Stefan Diggs, their receivers. And I just think they are a less balanced team than both the Dolphins and Jets. So I think they finished third in the AFC East. But this one, I think even if you finish third, I still think they win 11 games and make the wild card. I think that division is going to be super loaded. Um, and then finishing third in the AFC East doesn't really mean anything. So. I've got them there and moving on. We've got the Carolina Panthers. They were another team that was really hard for me, but I think Ika McQuanu is going to have a big breakout year. Here's my offensive tackle one in the 2022 NFL draft. He showed some flashes last year, but I think this year he's going to solidify himself as a top 10 offensive tackle. You got Bryce Young. You've got Frank Reich in there. I think this offense is going to be fun. I think they're going to move quite a bit. And I think we're going to get to see him really thrive in this offense. I think Ika mcquanu has got a lot of upside, and I'm buying into the hype. I think he was worth the six pick. Like I said, showed some nice flashes last year. I had him in my top 40, I believe, offensive tackles, and I still I think he's going to finish next year in that top 10. For the Chicago Bears, this one is probably my favorite take of the video. I think the Bears are going to be a disappointment yet again. I, I, I know a lot of people are really high that they – Brought Yannick Ngakwe, TJ Edwards, Tremaine Edmonds. Great pickups. This team still has a lot of question marks, in my opinion. And it starts on the defensive line. Yannick Ngakwe has had a one-year contract after one-year contract. And I just don't like it. Tayshawn Gibson, Andrew Billings, those are not guys that are going to change this defensive line. The receiver room, I love DJ Moore. Darnell Mooney, I think, is a solid slot guy. Chase Claypool, I think, is terrible. Cole Komet is more of a run-blocking tight end. He's not really that receiver, even though he led the team, I believe, in receiving touchdowns last year. I just have a lot of question marks, and truthfully, it starts with the quarterback. If you guys watch my quarterback ranking video, I went into Justin Fields a little bit more. I am very low on Justin Fields going into this year. As a quarterback, I think he really struggles with reading a defense, with scanning the field, going through his progressions, his footwork, his timing. Everything mechanically is off with them. I think the Bears have a top five pick, which will not be the Panthers pick. It will be their own pick. I think they're going to draft a quarterback if that's the case. Whether they finish number one and get Caleb Williams, which I don't think that's going to be the case, or you finish number three, number four, maybe Drake Mays on the board, maybe a trade back and get like a Quinn Ewers or something like that. I just don't think that Justin Fields is going to have this breakout year that everyone seems to think. This could age poorly. This None of these takes I'm saying are definitive, but this could age really bad. But if it doesn't, I think if they do finish in the top five, they draft a quarterback and Justin Fields is out of there. For the Bengals, we're starting to see a little bit kind of come out. I think Joe Burrow is going to play week one. Even though Jamar Chase said he doesn't want him to play till week five, I'm not buying it. I think he plays week one, and I think the Bengals have home field throughout the AFC playoffs. This is a really stacked Bengals team. This is, I think, the best Bengals team Maybe ever. Um, well, I'm not going to go that far. But definitely of the last few years of, in the Burrow era, the offensive line is complete. I think the secondary looks really good. And I love some of the additions they made. Adding Miles Murphy to the opposite side of Trey Hendrickson could be lethal. They brought all their pieces back. Didn't really lose much. And I think this is a team that's going to be primed for a lot of success. Joe Burrow is going to be a top three quarterback yet again. And I just really am buying into the Bengals this year. I think they are healthy and have the number one seed in the AFC going into next season. For the Cleveland Browns, I think Miles Garrett is going to be awesome this year. 
He has been one of the best edge rushers in the league. I had him ranked at number three. I think he leads the league in sacks this year and wins defensive player of the year. I'm in on Miles Garrett this year. It's gone to Nick Bosa. I know Micah Parsons is in that category as well. We need that one defining season from Miles Garrett because I think if he can win a defensive player of the year, we could be talking Hall of Fame for him because he has been f- absolutely incredible throughout his career so far. And I think he's going to lead the league in sacks this year on a Browns defensive line that is very much improved with Dalvin Tomlinson and Shelby Harris, Siaki Ika, just for some peace on the interior. He adds a Darius Smith to the opposite side. This is a really fun Browns defense. I think Miles Garrett is going to be incredible this year. And I've got him to win defensive player of the year next season. For the Cowboys, yeah, I think Dak's going to do it again. Um, was in a debate on, on Twitter with this. I just was really concerned about Dak. And I am I know I don't like to pay attention to camp interceptions, but it's been an issue there for him as well. I think he leads the league in interceptions again. There's a guy who I believe only played 12 or 11 games last year and had 15 picks. That's got to improve. Um, and I've just not seen a ton of improvement. He's Uh, doesn't time his passes really well. I'm picking him to lead the league in interceptions again. Nothing too hot. I think a lot of people, he said that he was going to have less than 10 this year. I'm taking the over on that one, and I've got him uh, to lead the league in picks. For the Broncos, I think Russ Cooks. um, Let Russ Cook will be back. And they. you saw it a little bit at the end of last year. Once they fired Nathaniel Hackett, and I've talked about this so many times, once they fired Hackett, Russell Wilson started to show flashes of the old Russell Wilson, running around a little bit more, buying time. The offense looked a lot more open and free, and they almost beat Kansas City with Russ. He looked really solid in that game, and I think we're going to see that again. Sean Payton saying that they've started to see some flashes of that in practice, and I cannot wait to see it on full display. I'm in on Russell Wilson this year. I think the Broncos, if they could stay healthy, which they've gotten the injury bug early in camp with Tim Patrick and Mike McGlinchey, they could be a borderline wild card team because they've got one of the best defensive units in the league. I think if Russ can play like we know he's able to play, that the Broncos could be a top 10 team in the NFL. Uh, For the Lions, I think Jameer Gibbs is going to be absolutely incredible. We're seeing it in camp. Some of the things he is doing to linebackers, whether that's his own in Jack Campbell or Bobby Okereke for the Giants, former Colt. I I think he's going to be great, both as a receiver and as a runner. This guy's electric in the open field, but even at Alabama, this is a guy who was really, really good as a receiver. I think he's going to have 1,500 scrimmage yards this year, which I know is a lot, but I think he's going to be really good this year. And I still think he, I don't think he's going to win offensive rookie of the year with those numbers, Uh, but I think he's going to really impress us. We're going to see some really nice stuff from him. I think they're going to use him a lot, like line him up in the slot maybe uh, because the receiver room is still pretty thin. And I think we're going to see a lot of big plays for Jameer Gibbs there in Detroit. So I'm picking him to have 1,500 scrimmage yards, and that's what I think is going to happen for the Lions. For the Packers, I think Jordan Love is going to be great. I think Jordan Love is going to show us that he can be a franchise quarterback, and he gets that contract extension from the Packers that I think he's going to end up getting. We saw some flashes of it in that Philadelphia game, but we really haven't seen it. You're seeing some different clips from camp as well where he's just buying time, throwing the ball at different angles, fitting the ball seamlessly in between defenders. This is a guy they traded up for to get in the first round. He's been learning this offense for three years now, playing under Aaron Rodgers, and I think we're going to get to see it on full display this year. I think Jordan Love is going to be a franchise quarterback for the Green Bay Packers, and I think he's going to get that contract extension he deserves. For the Houston Texans, um, this one was tough, but I think Derek Stingley is going to have a breakout season this year, and I think he finishes at the top 15 corner. He was banged up a little bit last year, played well in a couple of games, but overall, the whole se- the season as a whole, I think, was a little disappointing for the former number three overall pick. Now he has got a real defensive-minded head coach there in D'Amico Ryan's, who just was the defensive coordinator on the best defense, one of the best defenses in football. He's got some mentors there in Jimmy Ward that they have brought in. I think we're going to get to see this guy be the version of himself that we saw at LSU his freshman year, which was maybe the best individual freshman corner season in college football history as a true freshman was in 
incredible for the LSU Tigers that went on to win the national championship. I think he's going to do it again. Um, I think he's going to finish as a top 15 corner here. The Houston Texans secondary doesn't get talked about with Jimmy Ward and Derek Stingley and Jalen Petrie. I think that's a really interesting secondary. I got him to finish pretty high next year. For the Colts, uh, my team, I think Alec Pierce is the wide receiver one this year. A lot of people buying Pittman, and I love Michael Pittman. Don't get me wrong. I think Alec Pierce is going to be that guy. He's got pretty good size. He's got incredible hands. I think he's a little bit more versatile in what you can do with him. Michael Pittman is more that possession receiver. Well, I think Alec Pierce could be your every down more. You could line him up anywhere on the field, in the slot, outside. He's got good hands. Route running is pretty smooth. He's got better speed than Pittman down the field as well. I think him and Anthony Richardson are going to build that chemistry. I think he's going to be the wide receiver one for the Colts next season. I think Trevor Lawrence is the MVP this year. Um, I'm going to do an awards prediction video anyways, but those of you that watch this one, you know who my MVP is. Trevor Lawrence, that second half of the season last year was really, really good. I have him ranked as the seventh best quarterback in football. I think we're going to be looking at him as number four, maybe even number three next year, depending on how good his numbers are. He was a generational prospect, and we started to see why. His accuracy is really good. Didn't really turn the ball over last year. Has a great coach. They've got a true number one receiver. I think they improved the offensive line this year as well. We'll see what happens. Uh, obviously, Cam Robinson being out for the first six games is going to hurt. I think this Jaguars team is going to be really good. I think they win 11, 12 games. I think Trevor Lawrence is going to light it up. And he's my pick to win MVP this season. For the Chiefs, I think Justin Ross is the number one receiver. A undrafted free agent from Clemson. We've seen clips for about two years now of the things him and Patrick Mahomes have been working on. And I'm buying the hype. I think this guy's going to be awesome. They don't really have that number one receiver. Marquez Valdez Scantling's your deep ball threat. Kadarius Tony, I, I just Kadarius Tony, there's something missing in his game. He showed flashes. I'm not in love with him. You lost Juju. You lost Miko Hardman. You got Sky Moore there, who I think's fine. But I think Justin Ross is going to be that guy. I think he's going to be awesome. Um, we started to see some stuff from camp. We started to see it in workouts with Mahomes. Obviously, it's different when you actually are on the field, but. I think he's going to be really good this year. I think he leads the Chiefs in receiving. For the Raiders, I think Josh McDaniels gets fired. I think he's a bad head coach, and I just don't think the Raiders are going to do anything. I think he loses his job this year. I think he was a bad head coach hire from the get-go. They should have stuck with Rich Bisaccia. They decided not to. They went with McDaniels. They were terrible last year. He was terrible as a head coach in Denver. I think he loses his job, so... Nothing too crazy. I think he gets fired. And speaking of coaches that get fired, I think Brandon Staley also gets fired. He might be the worst head coach in football. His decision-making is terrible. His fourth down, super analytical coach, which really drives me crazy because you know you should be punting the ball here, and he decides to go for it. His decision-making is terrible. He should have been fired after they allowed Jacksonville to come back in that game. Doesn't make good adjustments. And I think the Chargers are going to make the playoffs again. And it's going to be another disappointing year. I think you really got to go get a true offensive-minded head coach. Because it's a defensive guy. You want your offense to take new heights and Justin Herbert to develop right. Go get an offensive-minded head coach. I don't think Brandon Staley is the guy. And I think he gets fired after this season. I think Stetson Bennett will be the Rams' starting quarterback by the end of the year. Matthew Stafford, I'm out on. I, I think Matthew Stafford's a future Hall of Famer. He's had a great career. At this point in his career, I don't think he's going to ever be the same. Last year, I was really disappointed. Stetson Bennett is a college football legend. And some of the things we're seeing from him, I'm really impressed. He's fitting the ball into tight windows. This is a guy who I think is going to, they're going, they picked him to be their next Brock Purdy, basically. Be that guy you find in the late rounds that's going to end up starting. And whether it's by injury or if Matthew Stafford is just absolutely terrible, I think Stetson Bennett will start games for the Rams by the end of the year. I think he's actually going to do pretty well. I think he's going to be a solid NFL quarterback. Do I think he's a franchise guy? Probably not, but I think he's going to be solid, and I think he's going to start some games for the Rams this year. For the Dolphins, Tyree Kill does it. He's going to hit that 2,000-yard mark. I thought he was going to do it last year. Then Tua got hurt, wasn't able to finish it. 
This is the year I think Tyree Kill is going to have over 2,000 yards this season. We're going to see him light it up. If you guys saw my fantasy football draft, I talked about this. I think Tyree Kill is a buy for fantasy for this season because I think he's going to be awesome. And I've got him hitting that 2,000-yard mark. Just because his deep playability is better than maybe any receiver in the league, he can get 75, 80 yards like that, and that's going to eventually add up. I think Tyree Kill has a 2,000-yard season. For the Vikings, I think they missed the playoffs. Their offense is good. I like what they have on that offensive side of the ball. Alexander Madison, I think, is going to be solid for them, replacing Dalvin Cook. I like Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson, top five in the league at their positions. The interior offensive line is a weakness for this team, uh, first and foremost. They allowed a ton of sacks last year, which I think concerns me. But I'm not worried about the offense. I'm worried about the defense. This Vikings team won more one-possession games than any team I've ever seen. And I just don't think they're going to get that lucky again. You don't win that many one-possession games back-to-back years. This defense is terrible. Uh, The secondary, they've lost some pieces there. And the secondary, losing Duke Shelley, losing Patrick Peterson, who were two of your better corners last year. Harrison Smith is still there. You also lost Zadarius Smith on the opposite side. The interior, you lose Dalvin Tomlinson. They lost a lot on the defense. And I don't think they really compensated very well. I think they are going to be, I think this NFC North is going to be better than people expect. And I think the Vikings are going to miss the playoffs. I've got seven teams over the Vikings this year. And I think that one might make Vikings fans a little bit mad, but I think I've got a few teams over them. Uh, I think Bailey Zappi is going to start for the Patriots. I saw that preseason game. I think he's a better quarterback than Mac Jones. I was watching that game against Houston um, where he played a couple of, a uh, couple of drives He's got great uh, ball placement, puts the ball in the right spots, scans the field really well. He's a little bit more mobile. He looked really good. And Mac Jones, I was really disappointed with last year. I thought Bailey Zappi looked pretty good in the snaps that Mac Jones didn't play. I'm in on Bailey Zappi, and I think at some point this season, Mac Jones gets benched, and we're going to see Bailey Zappi suit up and start some games for the New England Patriots. I think for the Saints, Michael Thomas comes back, has that bounce back season that a lot of Saints fans have been waiting for, and he hits that 1,000 yard mark. He's got a good quarterback in Derek Carr who is really good at hitting his receivers in stride. I think he's going to continue to run those slant routes that he has become really, really good at running. I think he's going to have 1,000 yards. A lot of the attention is going to be on Chris Olave this year. I think, I think Michael Thomas is going to prove that he can be a number one again in a contract year I'm buying into Michael Thomas and I think he has a thousand yards for the Giants I just think Daniel Jones is going to have the best year of his career again after the money we're going to see some improvement of him as a quarterback we saw him improve last year for sure on the ground had 700 yards rushing only 15 touchdowns I think he's going to get close to doubling that I think he gets between 25 to 28 touchdowns this year throwing And I think he's going to get around 3,500 yards this season. Second year of Brian Gable, an offensive-minded head coach who really opened up this offense. I think they're going to lean less on Saquon. They really pursued weapons this offseason. Got Paris Campbell, got Darren Waller, got Jalen Hyatt, who's looked really solid. And I think he's going to be pretty good. I've got him at 3,500 yards and 26 touchdowns for next season. For the Jets, I think Garrett Wilson finishes as a top-five receiver. Um, I, I think he has 1,500 yards receiving and really solidifies himself as a true number one. He would have had an even better season than he had last year if he had a good quarterback. Now you had a great quarterback in Aaron Rodgers. This is going to be a really fun Jets team. I think Garrett Wilson is going to be electric and awesome for the Jets this year. And we know he's a wide receiver one, but I think now he gets starts pushing for the number one receiver in the NFL. And I think that's what's going to happen for the Jets this season. For the Eagles, I think they're going to have the best regular season record in the NFL. If you look at their schedule, the first eight, nine weeks of the year, it is really easy. They don't really have that tough matchup. This is a team that really improved on the defensive line. Jalen Carter, I think, is a massive upgrade, and he's going to be incredible for them. I'm really in on Nolan Smith this year as well. The offensive line, you lost Isaac Siamlu. I'm not too worried about that. Jalen Hurts is going to have another year where I think we're going to see Good stuff from him. The skill positions are fantastic for the Eagles. I do have questions about the running back room. 
they didn't really use the running backs as much. There was more of a running back by committee last season. I think we're going to see the same this season. I think the Eagles have the best regular season in the NFL. For the Steelers, I think George Pickens has about 1,200 yards and seven touchdowns, which leads to Steelers. I do think Deontay Johnson is going to be good again. Pat Fryermuth, I think, is going to be good. But from what I think George Pickens is a physical specimen. He is huge, got great hands. He loves to be physical off the line of scrimmage. And I think that's going to benefit the Steelers this year, playing that hard-nosed Steelers football that we all know and love. But I think George Pickens is going to be great for the Steelers, and he's going to lead the team in receiving. But for the Niners, had the number one ranked defense. Yeah, Javon Hargrave to an already stacked defensive unit, and that's really all you had to do. Didn't really lose any pieces here. You add a top 15 interior defensive lineman. It's a pretty simple one. I got them as the number one ranked defense in the fo- in the NFL next year. For the Seahawks, I think they're going to win the NFC West this year. People are sleeping on the Seahawks so much. I feel like Geno Smith is a top 15 quarterback in the league. I think we can all say that pretty definitively after what he did last season. You add Jackson Smith and Jigba to already a really good receiver room. Um, tight ends, you've got a few that are pretty solid. The offensive line is young, but I think it's going to get even better. Charles Cross, Abraham Lucas, who were solid as rookies. I think we're going to see them improve even more in their second years. And the defense got nothing but better this year. You add Devon Witherspoon from Illinois, who was my CB1. You add Bobby Wagner, who's a top five linebacker in football. You add Draymond Jones, maybe the most underrated guy in the NFL right now. He was great for the Broncos last season. And they've added a lot of really good pieces to this team. The secondary stacked, the defensive line, maybe the interior, there's still some more holes, but I think it's a good Seahawks team. You only got to beat the Niners one time, and I think because I think their records are pretty close to each other. I think they're going to win the NFC West this year and maybe push for a Super Bowl. For the Buccaneers, I think the Mike Evans thing is over. I think it's going to be a tough year for the Bucs. And Mike Evans, I think, is still going to put up great numbers. And I think they're going to move him. I think it's going to be similar to kind of what we saw with uh, Christian McCaffrey last year. A guy who they just aren't a good team. And they're going to go out and just try and get more draft capital. They need a quarterback so desperately in Tampa Bay. The offensive line is weak. I think they're going to trade Mike Evans to a team that's looking for an extra receiver to make that Super Bowl push. I don't really have a team off the top of my head that makes a ton of sense. But I think someone is going to go make an offer for Mike Evans. We heard rumblings of this in the offseason. Didn't happen. I think this is in midseason. I think we're going to see Mike Evans moved from Tampa to another situation. And it's going to be it for him in Tampa Bay. I think Malik Willis is going to start for the Titans. He apparently is pretty clearly the QB2 right now in Tennessee. A guy who I think we kind of gave up on him a little too early. Because look at the situation he was in in Tennessee was basically thrown out there his rookie season, which everybody knew he was not ready his rookie season. And he played anyways and looked absolutely terrible. Another year to develop, learn the NFL game, learn how to read defenses. I think he could actually be a solid NFL quarterback. Uh, I think he's going to be the starter this year for Tennessee at some point, whether it's another Ryan Tannehill injury. I think he's going to steal that starting job. I've got Malik Willis as the starter by the end of the year. And finally, Sam Howell's the guy. I think he is going to solve the commander's quarterback woes. I think he's going to be really good this year. Whether the commanders actually get to the playoffs or not, that's a question for another day. But I think he is going to prove why they got him, why they made him the starter. I think he's going to be a really good quarterback for a number of years for the Washington commanders. But let me know, guys, what are your takes on the NFL this season? What do you guys think is going to happen? What is your unpopular opinion? Let me know down in the comment section below. That's going to do it for me. Be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new. I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.